Hello, welcome to the Full Circle Podcast. This is the first one of the day of the world. You're, what the fuck is good, y'all? What's it's your boy Buggy with the boy Hendo, bro. How you doing? I'm chilling, dog. I'm, Facts. I'm type high. Facts. Yeah, we just <laughs> took a major dab. Some I'm, sh- some I'm actually not okay right now. <laughs> like, super stoned. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I usually wait till after, but because it makes my mouth dry as fuck. And yeah, I got cotton mouth now because of it, but it's all good. I'm chilling. We'll Fuck figure it. it out. We'll do it. We're gonna. We're definitely gonna figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> what you been up to, bro? What you been doing? I've been making music, dog. Chilling with my kid. You know, uh, just trying to work on being a better me. Honestly, like there's a lot of things that I thought I got over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm and not over. You actually? Here. <laughs> like, I'm not over. You dog. actually faced them? Like, not even just experiences. Like, actually, like toxic habits that I have within myself. You know. So, like, and the mm-hmm. fact that these things kept occurring after, like, w- when you realize the things you are doing, the routines you do to you know, yourself. Like, yeah. When you realize the things you're doing are wrong, but then you still do them, it kind of like takes a real stab at like your humanity, mm-hmm. your strength. Yeah, and your, your will, your, your, your discipline, your right? Existence yeah, like, overall, yeah. Everything about that is just weird, cause like in your, cause I, I've explained this to people before. Like, if I'm yelling at somebody, or my, or I'm showing like a toxic trait, or like I'm losing my temper, my head will be like, "Stop, stop! What you're doing is wrong." But like my body just won't, dude. You that's know? that's like, like that's kind of like this mechanic thing that we do. Same thing, like you can attribute that to like scrolling on Instagram. Like I be in my head, like why are you still on here? And dude, it's 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 kind of getting worse. Like I've consciously tried to stop doing it. Right. Like and I, I'm not trying. They're not equal at all. What you're discussing right there, but I'm just relating it to like there is something there that it's not us doing it because we're like there's us in the back is telling us not to do it, but right. then we're still stuck in these um physical routines. I feel like a part of that needs to be like a like. Uh, just chalked to like disassociation with everybody because mm-hmm. I firmly believe that everybody's mentally ill in some way, shape, or form, and no one just talks. Yeah, about bro, it. we're all crazy, bro. You know, like, we all, we're real, all like, crazy. Like when you zone out and shit, like I firmly believe that's just disassociation. I'd be thinking like, about thirty things at one time. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it makes you just like shut down and like be. Stagnant. And people think you're disassociated. Yeah, when really, fact, you're in thirty places. At you're kind of panicking. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I don't want to do this. You see, feel me? see, I don't see. That's that's different. I like. I never really get anxiety in the sense of like a panic, but I'll get anxiety when like um. I don't even think this is the thing. I've never. I don't really think anxiety is a thing because we all have those nerves. It's just a form of nerves that build up, and then once it gets to a point, you can build it up by yourself and blow it the fuck up mm-hmm. and really make yourself freak the fuck out about things, like psyching yourself out. It's like when I was a kid, when I was 9, 10, 11, I would do the gnarliest flips off of diving boards. Something happened when I turned 13. I couldn't get over the mental hump of just doing it, and I got scared to flip. When yeah, I never anxiety. got hurt, never got hurt from it. So yeah, that's a. I guess that's what anxiety is, right? Yeah. And that's just a bunch of fucking nerves built up that you let go to your fucking brain. Well, I don't know. There's this. There's this person I know that uh, she suffers from like clinical anxiety, like mm-hmm. almost like she was born anxious. You know, like, and like that's crippling. What, yeah, you know, like even stuff with like clinical depression and stuff like that and bipolar, or whatever, you know, you may have like mm-hmm. a lot of that stuff is stuff you're born with. Like, and to a certain degree, I feel like with your genes. Yeah. Your yeah. Genetics, you know, like, I guess to a certain degree, I feel like just, you know, the every days of life can definitely make that worse. <laughs> but like there, you need to differentiate between like what moments of anxiety are and what like mental illness could be. Cause like there's so many different mental illnesses that cause anxiety. Depression can cause anxiety. Bipolar can cause anxiety Mm -hmm. and it'll be a separate diagnosis still because it happens so habitually, Mm -hmm. you know, it's really crazy. And it's, it's kind of strange. That is weird. The way, the way your brain works is really wild. I I think there's different kinds of uh, depression. Yeah, totally. Totally. There's different forms of it. Like, when you're dealing, when you're mourning someone, like, I don't think that's depression. That's like reality setting in that it ends. And just like you said, I guess the only thing that controls time is the fact that we do die and that yeah. there is an end for everybody. So that's the only reason we track it. Yeah. The reason we get sad about people dying is because we don't want to question our own mortality. 
and it brings you there. You're, yeah, it brings you right there to to realize. Like, damn, and, I'm finna die one day. Yeah, any day, no, any different way. Right. <laughs> like final yeah. destination type Bro, shit. Bro, I swear to God, and God rest his soul, because his birthday's in two days. My boy Bo, he died, mm-hmm. uh, like, I think five years back. And uh, I was just chilling one day, and I got a call from <clears> his mom, and, he, and she was like, yeah, Bo's dead. And I'm like, what? Like, at first I was like, nah, you're lying. You feel me? And then, like... Yeah, I don't believe... I didn't believe him at first. Right. Like, and then it, like, set in. I was like, wow, she's not joking. Because she mm-hmm. wouldn't joke about this, you mm-hmm. know? And it was crazy, like... And then, you know, fast forward five years later, like... Some part of those wounds still feel fresh, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like getting, like, a like a real bad road burn from, like, longboarding. It never boarding. goes away, yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, it never goes <laughs> it's away. It's always there. Yeah, But totally. that's the thing, like, that... I don't think that's depression. I think that's, a. Uh, that's like a super major growing period if you can get it's if, a necessity if you, if you for can real, grow yeah. through it because a depression as far as like I lost a basketball game or like I didn't pass a test that's like kind of something that you had some sort of control mm. in whereas when a death happens some people dead ass get real crazily like in a slump for yeah, years from about shit. shit yeah like, but that's 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 mental that's anxiety that's connected into the anxiety yeah, totally. I guess it's fear anxiety is nothing but mm-hmm. a fancy word for fear yeah it's fear and the the fact of the matter is like relinquishing your fear always comes with facing your fear Mm -hmm. you know so like with people who do suffer from anxiety you just have to do what you're anxious about yeah you know if you're anxious to like dm that girl because you don't want to get rejected dm her and get rejected anyway because then what happens see but this is the thing you you don't really think about death and i don't fear death per se i fear the way i'm gonna die i just don't understand it and that's the thing like when you come to grips with that like whether it was a dog, a cat, a friend, a family member, it's like it's it's hard to digest and work around right. and comprehend what your but you know what's helped me with reason that? for existence is. You know what's helped me with that? And I'm a faith, I'm a firm believer in I'm a firm believer in God. But mm-hmm. like, if there's not a God, who cares? Because I'm gonna die anyway. Facts, you know. And if we come back, see, this is the thing. None of us know this shit, and and and, and where if, our conscience. And if goes, we reincarnate, we won't know that we lived another life anyway. Mm-hmm. So, like, what is because it that's part then? of the game, exactly. So, what is which it makes anyway? it a simulation, which is why that's been talked about a lot recently. But I don't even believe that. I, I can't believe that it's a simulation. We're not like digitalized, but. You know what I mean? Yeah, like as as far as like that would that that's a term of simulation. If, I mean the fact that reincarnation could be considered a term of that. Like like that. Like you're well, saying, energy energy what never if, dies. What, what if we get like reincarnated as a fucking clock, or as <laughs> as that fucking wheel or something? I feel like you only get reincarnated into living organisms, because that would be the only way the karmic cycle would work. You know, you can't like be a piece no of way. shit and then come back as a leotard and not face any consequences <laughs> but that is the consequence you're a leotard for god knows who. but a leotard can't die it just gets ripped so where would the reincarnation come i always thought as a kid like <laughs> what if there's like a planet where like inanimate objects are the living objects that'd like, be sick you ever seen yo that'd be sick <laughs> i mean technically this 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 wood was a living object it was but and you were too before you died mm-hmm. and then you became you believe in evolution I believe in evolution. I believe in spirituality. I believe in the... I don't know about evolution. I, I Because I know about metamorphosis, you know? It's the same thing. No, no. Evolution is that, like, we were a fish, and now we're humans. That's not changing form? No. Metamorphosis is a caterpillar changing to a butterfly. That's... It's, like, part of their growth, you know? But why can't elus- evolution be part of ours? I just don't know how it would. It's a theory at the end of the day, but yeah, it is. It's like, but I just don't know how it would make sense as far as you know, unless it was part of the metamorphosis originally, All right, and so we just don't know that it's a long term, a like, long term like metamorphosis. The fish yeah. are always meant to turn into crocodiles, or like these fish yeah, were always some meant shit to that be. Humans really don't know mathematically, geometrically. Mm-hmm. Geographically, evolutionarily, we don't even know that much shit about ourselves. Like, I don't want to talk about it because it's crazy, but like the Earth being round and shit—that's one of the things that's getting challenged a lot right now. That's ridiculous, and it's to me. but but this is the thing. Challenge it. The, but the like, whole thing is like th- the flat Earthers aren't even trying to prove that the Earth is flat. They're proving that it's not round. It's a, it's crazy how they're going about it because nothing. Then is, why call yourself a flat Earther? 
you know? Well, they were never called it. Oh. I guess it's kind of like... You think that's like something I don't like think thoughts, the media came thoughts, up with? Yeah, I don't think thoughts came up with thoughts. Ah! You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, oh, they man. definitely didn't. <laughs> Bitches were sucking dick one day. It was like, you know what we is? We're thoughts. <laughs> like, when I first heard that word, I was like, oh, geez. You know what's an acronym? One. What? For what? For that hoe over there. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Think about it. I uh, didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. That that but my whole there. my whole take on existence and like evolution and metamorphosis is like you got to think if you I do, don't know if I'm you just, do believe in a higher power you got to kind of think God as like a, not only just like from a spiritual and celestial standpoint you got to think about it from a scientific uh, standpoint because in science there's always a cause and effect for everything mm-hmm. so like when you think about science and you think about why dinosaurs died how they died how it changed the earth how the earth is mathematically perfect and how the galaxy is mathematically perfect there has to be a cause and effect for whatever created us and and the fact that we're sentient sentimental sympathy holding empathy holding and also evil human beings proves that there has to be a creator and an opponent of that creator. Yeah, because there's bad the and good and yang, energy, yeah, you know? but like, that anger, that evil is that's the primal version. You know, that's like the the real shit that we all have. That's the yeah, I, I feel to, like I have, to, to, I have to fight this lion to yeah, survive yeah, yeah. right now. I that's feel like to a certain is. degree jealousy and like paranoia and shit like that is almost really primal. It's a built-in trait for our, to our bodies. It's a it's a physical response but to, how to much let us that, know when, like, it's a, you know, that saying, yeah. go with your gut? That's what that is. And I don't think we go with our gut enough. But because how much is that we, spiritual and how much is that scientific? That's the thing. I don't know because we say that animals don't have, like, conscience. I choose to not believe that. But we don't know. Yeah, you choose. That's what I'm saying. But we don't really know. You know how much a dog loves if humans? ants are fucking, <laughs> like, we don't really know if ants are fucking just living it up down there. Do you know how, you know? Like, no, nah, for real. Let's talk about that for a minute. Do you know how strong ants are on a relative basis? Yeah, if they were us, they'd be able to lift the house with their exactly. fucking one, do you know, hand, one arm. Do you know that ants do everything for the good of their own colony? There's only so, one. There's only one queen. So so no how one, does no one's fucking in so there? So if you ask me, no one's fucking in no there. No one. Everybody's on semen retention. <laughs> the niggas is disciplined. That's where humans are headed, dog. <laughs> you feel know I me? Mean? So if you queen, ask queen me, bees everywhere, we're all on semen retention right now. <laughs> if you ask me, ants are smarter than humans because at least they don't fuck shit up. And the motherfuckers who do fuck shit up, they just get killed. Well, they eat them that, right there, and they. It's, we you seen here. the thing where like if you put two colonies of ants in a jar, they won't fight. But when you shake it up, they will. Same thing with humans. That's yeah. That's us. That's like that's, we're just, the shaking is economy, race, class. But that's man made. Like, but so is the shake. Hold is on, it just like you said, we know what we're doing, but we still do it. Right. That's like that primal. This is what we're discussing. Right. So I think right. there is yeah. like not that we have split personalities. But it's like we were fucking injected with some sort of deeper consciousness into a primitive being, and we're all trying to understand how we're in this meat bag. And yeah, yeah, yeah. during the I during the time that we're here, we're using our time doing stocks and classism and mm-hmm. arguing over shit. We're shaking the jar ourselves. You know we're shaking our own jars. All right, so, so let me ask you a question. This is the most important thing Vince Staples has ever said in his life. How do we, how do we as artists... As people who who are trying to find out everything and people who are trying to live our life and our existence through our art, Mm -hmm. how do we label rap and hip hop as art if we can't price it ourselves and if we can't, you feel me, do what we want with our art? And and, and then you think about jealousy and how we, how we, how we, how we shit on rappers that don't have enough money or how we shit on rappers that don't sell enough rappers. But Andy Warhol can only paint one painting and and we don't see well, shit. Well, this is the thing. I started painting. I'll show you the paintings before you leave. It's crazy how painters I, can make so much bread this off. Is, what, this like, is the thing. What I, I money was, doesn't I was matter. fucking around with a painter who's like done a lot of selling of them, and he's gone to a lot of shit. And art, as far as paint goes, is the one thing that you can price whatever the fuck you want. So depending on the artist, if they have a unique style and they only do a certain amount, yeah, they can price it high. But regardless, I made this painting, and it doesn't matter if a thousand other people have made something that's similar. What it means to me is what it means because of what I was going through, and it's why I made it, which is why it's worth thirty grand and not thirty dollars. Exactly. For instance, there's two paintings in there. There's, There's two paintings in there I would never ever sell. Because of what happened when I made them. Right. But this is the thing. You can't do that with music for some reason. Why unless you? unless you completely make the beat, you make everything. You know, because otherwise yeah. you got to give a big that percentage is, to yeah. people who helped. 
another thing, hip hop was based off of being created from sampling. So technically a lot of it is not even theirs anyway because it's, it's sampled from disco and, and the generations before. And that's Thank because you. that's because Thank they took you. niggas think rap started in the eighties. Like <laughs> Well, that's because they took um instruments out of the schools. Niggas was in Bell Bottom. They had in to, the they 70s, had to bro, innovate. Rapping. But this this is why I love improv. Improv drumming and improv music because it's on the spot. That's what hip hop is. It was created out of improv because they didn't have instruments anymore. Right. They had fucking turntables. Mm. And they started as the five. People forget what hip hop is, and this is what kind of t- steered me but away. You know who Loki was the first rapper a little bit ever? recently? What you know who Loki was the first rapper ever? Who? Gil Scott Heron. Nope, Muhammad Scott- Ali. Fuck out of here! Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. <laughs> Gil Scott Heron, older than him. There's now there's rappers like there's some old shit like in the in the ten, 1910s. You ever heard the revolution would be televised? That's Gil Scott Heron. Where? It's the dude is literally just. Talking and rapping like as a regular nigga behind mm-hmm. with a regular voice behind a jazz band talking about how like the white man is fucking up the black community and how mm-hmm. the revolution won't be televised and shit. And a lot of rappers are like a lot of conscious rappers are inspired by Gil Scott Heron, mm-hmm. like pan African motherfuckers. Like Earl Sweatshirt mentions. I'm Gil not Scott good with Heron. names. I'm, probably, I'm sure I know. Bro, if I, Gil if Scott is that nigga. And like at, the crazy thing is, is like Earl Sweatshirt's dad is actually part of being a pioneer of hip hop because like. Older, like, hip-hop artists would, like, come to him for advice and, like, uh, some shit like that. Like, the, but the niggas, like, Aero Sweatshirt's, hit, like, hip-hop roots are deep-rooted. It's really weird. Mm. You know, like, but... And that's how, that's how I am, too, as, as a rapper. So when I saw what happened, and I said this in the other podcast, when I saw what happened in 2017, 2016, 18, the switch of just, like, I, 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 had, I had this theory... Of like it was low how how and when genres change, and when they shift, and it's about every seven to eight years. But what happened was from 2013 to 2015 is internet got crazy different, and then 2016 is when the start of rock transition happened. So we went through all the phases of rock in rap. We had all the subgenres that rock went through happen in rap, punk and shit. yeah, all of yeah. it to the grunge to the emo. Now where are City we at? Morgan what shit. happened to after grunge? What happened to rock? died because there was hip-hop right but now there's there's no new genre like i can't imagine a new genre unless they all get combined into one which is kind of already happening with meshing or unless like a new instrument's created because you got to think synths were new in the 70s and shit which created new sound textures to make trippy psychedelic jam bands and shit which led into techno like techno 808s into hip-hop subs and shit like you know that. What I think I think so niggas, I don't know where anything's gonna go. I think niggas <laughs> like, I think niggas should really make their own beats. Yeah, I think everything's gonna it's it's gonna circle back to talent. Like everyone's seeing how everyone's That's what it doing always it. does, yeah, bro. It's gonna circle back to the you, talent. You gotta think, bro, the only reason we think these niggas are popping is because we listen to the internet. Kendrick Lamar has more money than all of them. I mean, he hasn't dropped a fucking album mm-hmm. in years. Facts. Drake is the most successful nigga. Well, no, we know out. the internet, internet's just fake. That's what's sad, too, is, like, people are really living off this fake That's why shit. money doesn't matter, bro. That's why, like, as an artist, like, I... Well, that's the thing. It does matter because they pay for promo, and I, like, I refuse to do that. Like, it's, it's, it goes against the whole purpose for me, you know? Yeah. The whole point of doing this is to, like, actually... When I got into music, I thought it was based off talent. Learned quick that it's the entertainment industry, and I thought... I was just confused. Even the, as even far the niggas as, we look up to are gimmicks, bro. Yeah, it's sad. No, like that's what I'm saying. When I peel back that, why curtain, do you think Cameron put on that? <laughs> it's bad, bro. It's, when you peel back that curtain, you're like, oh no, shut out the dips. You're like, you don't want to be a part of none of it. But that's oh. the thing. So then I had to. So but that's what happened is, this last year. And a, that's what happened this last year and a half. Like I planned on taking a break, and then COVID happened. You can and get I was, your money and leave. I was really able to assess what I wanted to do, and creating my own shit. All 100% like painting. I never knew I right. wanted to paint, but I was like, yo, fuck it. I think I want to paint. And I bought some canvases and I fucking love it. And it's fucking epic. You know what's crazy is that, like, yeah, like we can talk about like mixing genres and stuff, but like from, a, from my own perspective, like listening to my own music, I don't think any artist sounds like me. I don't think any mm-hmm. artist raps like me. I don't think any artist is talking about the things that I'm talking about or is as deep and as like transparent with their personality and their well, flaws I as I am. Any, I'm really. really I'm really honest with my music and like the beats that I choose and how I let them flow. Like I've always told people the beat has to be a person. 
Like you have to look at it at, like raising a kid. Like the beat with the lyrics, with the mood, with the content. You have to think about it as raising a person and, and making a person. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like yeah, no, I have I have so many babies. And that's the thing too. It's also a selfish thing. Like you, you have a kid, so like how how was that when you found out you were gonna have him? As far as being an artist and your dreams and your aspirations, like when you found out that he they was made on the me way, go harder. Niggas be scared. It made you go harder. Yeah, niggas be scared. Like. I do my best to like bounce because my son is my first baby. He saved my life in a certain way. My music did the same thing for me, and it's also my emotional baby. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like it's my it's my talents baby. So mm-hmm. I don't put my son or my music on any kind of pedestal over one another. I love them both equally. Mm-hmm. And other fathers will probably hear this and think that's selfish, but I don't think so at they all. They don't understand what creating is. Yeah, like. you have no idea what it's like to create yeah. an actual life and create a world where people that don't even know me can go to and yeah. be like, "This man saved my life." Mm-hmm. And I think that's why artists aren't. We're, they're all in for it for the wrong reasons. You yeah. feel me? There's no, everyone's opportunist, and like it's the thing that Nipsey Hussle said: when there's a game of opportunist, it's fine, but there, that takes away the loyalty and incentive to be loyal, right. and it takes away all the code, which means everyone's cool with stabbing each other in the back to get what they need. You know how many times? Which means everybody's just stabbing each other, smiling in these pictures to get the money. And you know at the how end many of the niggas day, of uh, you know music how many is a spiritual thing. It's supposed it to connect you. You know how many friends like Amber Rose it, dated Amber Rose? It's, it's yeah, it's that's weird. You know, Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly, Kanye West, and a few other niggas all dated Amber Rose, and they all knew each other, and they was cool. With each it's other. like popular kids in high school. Like, like it's the popular seniors in high school passing around the new freshmen or something. That's it's, weird, bro. It's weird shit. That's weird. And you see that, and but that's the thing. That's it's, weird. It's copied and pasted all over. I don't society. want anything a famous nigga but, hit, bro. But in every every level, nothing. And hold on, but in every level, it doesn't matter. It's copied and pasted across of society. Even like gamers and jocks and musicians, and it's the same hierarchy. So it this is, is a natural yeah, totally. thing. That just that's like there's a primitive natural thing yeah, that people dude, go to. Being competitive and having an ego is definitely part of like primal human, you know, instincts. Because it wouldn't, we wouldn't have mm. created civilizations if we didn't look at the other civilization and be like, "Fuck y'all." Yeah, it's about you that. Know, it's, like, it's about that conscious part is trying to hold back that primitive part. Yeah, and but but deep down, we want to fucking just break shit sometimes. You know, when it's even when it's necessary, but. We have to hold ourselves back. Because and hold ourselves accountable. Yeah. And the only reason we have to is because we're sentient, conscious human beings, bro. We mm-hmm. have sympathy. We have ego. We have anger. We have love. We have jealousy. We have depression. We have all of that shit within our bodies. Tigers don't have to worry about shit but being a tiger. We don't know that. <laughs> this is the thing. We really don't yeah, know. you're right. Because right. they could just be sitting there like, yo, like... I don't know. Like they could, be, they could be having because <laughs> cr- uh, you know, yeah, like monkeys, right. monkeys get fucked up by like eating those centipedes and shit in Madagascar. Uh-huh. They bite it, and the centipedes secrete like this poison that gets them high. Dolphins get high off of puffer fish. Like dolphins, we know dolphins fuck for pleasure too. Not only to, to dolphins reproduce. rape as well. Dolphins might be the humans with the fish that evolved. And they bro, who the fuck <laughs> said that? I think uh, knows, I think bro. Joe Rogan said some shit about <laughs> Dude, that. Before. Everyone says that, but that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a when, but when you question it, like when you question the evolution theory, it's still a theory. It when is. you question the circle of the fucking earth, when you question anything, like you you get considered crazy. When you question depression, when you question anxiety, when you talk, when you bring it up, it's like. It is. We need to. We need to stop like and make it normalized to so, like for people to question everything. Talk, I, yeah, I could give a fuck. Less. Question everything and talk about what the fuck they actually think. Yeah, totally. Because we we it's not just our day and age that we filter ourselves. Like people just aren't saying how they feel genuinely. I really don't know why. If I ever pissed a person off, I would want them to come to me and be like, "Hey." That hey, this okay bothered me. me, and yeah. like, and like, not hold it and be like, I don't fuck with him, and then he, and then you do it again because you didn't know that it bothered them. Exactly. It's just like I use it in one of my songs. I say like, I can't even ask one of my neighbors for ketchup. <laughs> I can't. I could, but I can't. <laughs> right? Exactly. You know, like I'm not going to. Yeah. If I don't know situations like that, cause there anxiety. is no community. I don't know what any of my neighbors want. 
I don't know what they want to do in their life, what career they're trying to chase. Right. They don't know that I'm a musician. And movies make it seem like there's so many communities. Yeah, like there's that. there's not. They, Nobody they, gives a fuck. They, they they don't know that I want to be a musician or anything like that. Right. But until all, you become big, and then they're like, yeah. oh, oh, that was my neighbor. Yeah, right. No, bitch, I don't even know. I don't know your name. Oh, put your testicles like, in my mouth. I, I see that you fucking order like five times a week. That's all I see. Yeah, you get delivery real. all the time, or maybe Jimmy it's likes drugs, donuts. <laughs> But that's the Suck thing. It's, it's a weird thing, dude. There's no, there's no real community. So these things we're talking about, depression and why we feel alone, it's not just about the phones and the fact that we have that, that escape whenever we want it. Like, bro, if I, I'd rather not I didn't have, have a cell escape. phone for four years and I was actually looking out the window that's like, fire. when I was in the car. When I was standing in line with people, I was reading the full menu. I was like seeing what else they had instead of what I normally would get. Right. But at the same time, when I was not looking out the window, I'm like, fuck, I'm trying to like scroll on something. So it's like a, it's a weird ass addiction we need to figure out. Yeah. We got to learn how to balance it. Cause our I don't kids, have my phone on me right now and I'm chilling. Yeah, this, yeah, I'm fine with it. But like kids, like imagine being a one year old with an iPad. <laughs> like a one year old. Nah. You know, I was having this crazy. debate about, I was having this debate with my coworkers the other day. Like I'm not, I don't understand why so many, like a lot of people go to like, blaming the artist for how they kids be growing up and shit like that but mm. all you gotta do is turn the radio off and be oh, no, around that's, your, that's yeah that's be no. around your kids the, some pr- more. the fact that i was raised by the tv my son is don't know not i was one allowed to, to watch the me? tv my son don't not know one tory fucking lane song yeah. and i'm one of tory lane's biggest fans my son don't know not one earl sweatshirt song mm. he don't know shit he know coco melon <laughs> You're, he know robot trains Y'all niggas be shit parents And just admit it Like You feel me Like Don't sit there and be like Lil Nas X is demonic La 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 Even if he is So what That's not your business yeah, nigga. Don't be letting them Like this is the thing Fun. Like, I Let him to, worship Satan If you worship sister, God Like my sister I have nieces And they're like 12 and 11 right now Enemy need a fucking enemy Bro they're 12 and 11 years old And like TikTok bro So I'm They shouldn't be on TikTok Exactly So I like told my sister Like Dude, like TikTok I, is full of thirst traps. I'm not gonna tell you how to. I'm not gonna tell you how to um, fucking raise your kids and stuff. I've never said anything to you, but one thing I gotta say is get them the fuck off TikTok Yo, and anything and that has Instagram to do. And Facebook. So they didn't do it for like I just said. Not it, she kids do it. And two kids twerking Two weeks room. later, I saw I saw them, and I heard make it drop. That's that wet. That's that. I was like. Tessa, Tessa is not listening to fucking Cardi B right now. That's horrible. So I snuck in behind and saw what she was watching. And it was a girl doing a squat, like in a gym, like a yeah. badass bitch. And a guy behind her watching her do the squat. And she drops the squat, Predatory. acting like she dropped it and started twerking. And my 10-year-old niece is on TikTok, the, the kid version because the way that the, the girl, that the, the way that the girl squatted, it was like a considered comedic for and okay for kids. That's but it was not okay all, for children. It was yeah, it's not. So neither I, is making. I Mrs. ran out to my Hold sister. On. I was like, I was like, dude, do you know what I just fucking saw? What Tessa saw? Like, and I grabbed it from Tessa and like fixed it. And yeah, that was that was bad. They they, they don't, obviously don't go on TikTok now. But this is the thing. The people aren't That's just people right. aren't policing their kids like that, bro. So my they're kid don't know things, not one. They're Look. seeing things that like they're seeing a lot of propaganda, bro. Because yeah. they, like I'm not to cut you off again. We grew up when the internet was actually free. I went viral on YouTube before I had Twitter, and I didn't capitalize on it because I didn't even realize what what really happened at the time. Yeah. You know that Camden Cipher getting over a hundred thousand views in like four days in 2012. That was before anything really was going that's viral. That's unheard of. Yeah. So and this is what I'm saying. From 2012 to 2015, that's when the advertisements and incentives of algorithms came around. And that's where the paying to play, paying to be on playlists, and fake views, and fake followers, and fake this, and clout chasing, and all the fake shit really became the forefront. And you like the fake it till you make it shit. And you like it's it's so crazy because like bro, you don't exist in like this in real life. I know you, nigga. Yeah, when when like, you're around them, I know you, nigga. It's miserable. Like you think you're sad, you think you're depressed, and then you get around them when they don't have their phone out. <laughs> they're fucking, 
They're like niggas oh be my lost, God. bro. If niggas didn't have six thousand followers on Instagram and a motherfucking uh and a fake ass motherfucking chain or some uh, or or some ugly ass motherfucking shoes that you know you didn't pay that much bread for, niggas would be so upset. And By sad. the way, like, like a, a lot of that shit like is just corny. Well, like, hold on, a lot of shout it, out a lot to of my it, nigga Tino Nanami because all his clothes and jewelry is real. Just, he's dope as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> he swagged out. Shout out to Tino Nami. Fucking, but a lot he, of that shit. shit but a lot of that shit, like you see a lot of these people, you know they don't listen to that band. Right. You know they've never listened to Black Sabbath in their fucking life. Right. Like shit like that. That's Facts. that that's appropriation. That's like that's that weird shit, dude. Like and so yeah. this is what I'm saying. When, before I got You can appropriate any culture in the game. I didn't understand that the entertainment aspect and how the labels and how everyone controlling the shit goes. And it's obviously all about networking. It's a very small indus- industry. So I like I don't really want to be involved with it. I want to be like parallel to it, you know, Bro, if that makes sense. Vince Whatever Staples that means. literally show up to the studio, make music, make a music video and go home. Like Frank Ocean, he finessed the music industry. Mm-hmm. That's like that's crazy how bread, he did bread. that. Yeah. He, he finessed the fuck out of he it. He said, here, Apple Music, have a whole album of videos. <laughs> and then dipped and got some bread for it, too. And was done, and he's been done. And he's just been chilling I don't think since. he's going to come out with music ever again. He's just vibing. He's like the Andre 3000 of R&B. He's just vibing. Him and John Legend. I fucking love John Legend. I feel bad for him because of Chrissy Teigen, though. I don't even know who the fuck that is. That's, That's his, his wife. wife with the What's weird tweets and shit. What she be saying? You don't know? No, I don't, I don't have a Twitter. Oh my god! No, I don't. I no. These people dug out tweets from like, dude. She said mad weird shit. Like, like what? Something about a little kid in in a bathing suit turns me on or something. Yeah, weird shit. Damn. Maybe she meant she wanted to be a mom, but it didn't come out that way, bitch. Talking about Pizzagate, you know about Pizzagate and the weirdos. I don't know that. shit about Pizzagate. All right, see, you're in a cool spot with your brain. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, don't even. I didn't heard of it, but don't I don't know even, shit about it. Just don't even. I'll explain it after this. Nah, but. don't. <laughs> don't. No, I'll like synapse it so you don't do it. Is all what right, I mean. I won't so, look like, at it. Just don't even do bro, it because I, I I did the loop and I I understand all of it. You what know happened. what's crazy about like gift culture and like meme culture? It started on 4chan and no one gives a fuck about 4chan. 4chan got fucked up this past year with a lot of that, with the QAnon and shit like that. Yeah. But, but yeah, it all starts from... It, this is the thing. It goes from Reddit to Twitter to Facebook to Instagram. That's how things trickle down yeah. as far as... Reddit you should get... Yo, you should be on Reddit. Like, yeah, Reddit none will of us get use you Reddit. Poppin'. None of us use it. Reddit will get you popping. I have a Reddit. I should, get, I should make a Reddit. All right, Reddit. I'm going to make a Reddit, yo. Yeah. I'm going to make a Reddit. But nah, man. I don't know. Music is music has always had these dangerous pockets, like, and it's just more prevalent because we see it more on fucking social media and shit. We turn off our TV, we turn on our TVs and see it. Then we turn off our TVs and pick up our phones. I don't and see even it. like watch TV now. It's and even if you don't like watch the celebrity because I'm shit, always on my phone. But peep, even if you don't watch the celebrity shit on fucking TV, you're always seeing some nasty shit happening on the television. The news, yeah, is we're so. Up. We're so fucking desensitized to just blood and gore, and yet we can't fight. And yet I can't punch someone in the face that deserves it. Right. That's facts. It's like, fucked up. It's really weird. Like, squabble. Like, fuck the fact that girls can't, can punch us. In, I don't care about that. I don't want to punch a girl in the face. I can't punch a guy in the face? Man, Pete. You're telling you, me I can't punch another me in the face if he's a dickhead version of me? Pete, if a shorty punched me in my face, act like a nigga, I'm going to punch the shit out of you. <laughs> but if you a nigga and you want to act brawl like I'm going to punch the shit out of you, you feel me? <laughs> I, I act- See, like, the thing with a bitch is, like, I'll always apprehend her, but if she has a weapon, yeah, I'm knocking her. I'm knocking her the Smacking fuck out. Your shit. If she has a weapon. But if she's like, and if she's swinging and coming at me and I can't evade it or leave the premises, or if there's like a a puppy in the area that she can hold hostage she, yo, or something. A puppy. She could grab the dog uh, hostage or something. I don't know, dude. Sketchy shit. I but, just don't play that shit. Like, I don't play personal and physical disrespect because I would never physically disrespect another human being. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Unless you owe me bread or like some nut shit like that. But I don't know, yo. There's I I grew up a lot of, around a lot of like aggressive women. You feel me? Like, mm. 
I had to squabble with bitches. Man, every girl's aggressive. Bitches dog. can fight. Don't let, <laughs> every don't girl's let bitches aggressive. think they can't fight. Bitches Not can my fight. sister, Adrian, is a fucking asshole. She used to beat me up as a kid. See, niggas That's be crazy. Up. And like, I couldn't beat her up because I was a boy. I'm gonna whip your Even ass. Even though she was seven years older than me, I'm I couldn't. Whip that ass. I couldn't beat her up. I'm gonna whip that ass. I'm gonna whip <laughs> none of that. I'm gonna whip your ass. So like, mm-hmm. I don't know, bro. Everything is just no. Because there was weird. the thing like when I was a kid, my dad would always be like, "You better stop, because one day he's gonna be bigger than you, and he's gonna put you on your ass." And obviously, the day that I'm bigger than her, I'm now a man, and I can't do it. I can't fucking no, hit her. Fuck. <laughs> no, I'm gonna fuck you up. For <laughs> it's real. fucked up. The minute we get bigger and uh, I grow older and you want to start with that bullshit, yeah. Nah, the bullshit stopped, obviously. Well, fuck you up. That's fucked up. So, yo, I have um, I have a question. I got to get it. What's that? If you had to fight to the death, <laughs> could you do it with this? Fight to the death? And how would you do it? To the death? Yeah, like if you had the uh, your opponent has the same weapon, I'm gonna beat this shit out you with it. But how? Like from what end? How you gonna like ding like ding ding ding? So Pete, right? I'm gonna use this end off top. You feel me? I'm gonna bash the shit out you. You heard? And this is going this is gonna cut the shit out you. You think it might? It's not gonna break or nothing. That it's, might that might break this, after a this hit. This is going to break, but I'm gonna just grab the shit. And oh, so you're gonna hold it from you there? Oh, that is hard. You feel me? I'm gonna stab you in the oh, eyeball. Oh shit, that's a real starfish, I'm, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna stab you in the eyeball. Yeah. All right, so you're taking it from here, I'm right? I'm stab you in the eyeball. But like, you are gonna come like this, like like. If it break off, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I say you're gonna come like that first. At first, yeah. At first, I'm gonna. He's fuck gonna you come up. with the lollipop just, swing. You feel me? Yeah. You got the lollipop. And until that shit break, then I'm gonna grab, grab the fucking fat. starfish and I'm gonna stab you in the eyeball. Your That's, eyeball is mine. Shine yeah, this gun. This is what I try to tell people. Like every time when I ask them, like, bro, no matter what weapon it is, go for the fucking eye. Go for the, the eyeball. This is a throat. fight to the death. Yeah, somebody. something. Well, it depends on the weapon you got. You got a right. good starfish. That's like I didn't even know that this bitch is like in the fucking bro, eyeball. This shit is for real. Stab you in the fucking eyeball. I swear. Facts. So that's how he would fucking survive. Yo, look. <laughs> with the starfish. Me and this girl I used to date, we used to go into every single room when we were hanging out with our friends. When we would walk into the room, the first thing we would do is look at everything around the room and think about how many ways we could kill people in that room with these <laughs> said objects. <laughs> that's great. You feel me? That's we great. got up to like a hundred one day. I don't know why I just started asking it on the podcast. It was just like it can't randomly came one day, and I just now I do it every time. That's different. You should always embark <laughs> on a journey in your own like dark thoughts, mm-hmm. just to get them out. You feel yeah, me? just to see like how like if you had to survive, and this is the one thing you got. And this is the thing. Talk about survival. Me and my friend were talking about the other day. Like it's talking about like martial arts and boxing. I want to learn how to box. If so you were bad. locked in a room with the boxer, you could get out. But if you were locked in a UFC room with a UFC fighter, you it's probably wouldn't be able to get out. Yeah, because he's going to be everywhere. So that's why you don't see boxers doing MMA fights. Yeah. That's what I want to see. Floyd Mayweather would not last in the MMA. I'm trying to see some of that. But I would love to see Conor McGregor fight, period. I've never seen a fight by him. I've never dude, watched he's UFC. In two weeks. I've never watched UFC in my life. Conor fights in. Dude, I watch it every week, and that's, I, make, I make a lot of money. Yeah. I lose a lot. <laughs> but, but I make a lot too. Oh, fuck it. So I like Let's I do dollar dice. parlay bets, bro. Yeah. So I'll put like these three or four fights with these two basketball games with these two hockey johns, you know, right. and that'll wind up being nine picks for one dollar to pay out like four hundred, three hundred dollars. So I just do that kind of every day, and like once or twice a week it hits, and I'm just like Making slowly, bread. constantly climbing up. Yeah, it's gnarly. But oh, I gotta get into that. Yeah, it's a, like, dude. Yeah. And if, if you join all my shit, it gives me free money and you free money when oh, you I join it. So that. like, do you cash? Can you cash out at any time? Yeah, like we should. We'll do it when we'll do it when this shit's done. Yeah, I need that. Word, yeah. I need that. Yeah, child so. support whipping my ass. I need that. It's word. Right. Fucking um, yeah. So um, we're gonna do something real quick. We're gonna go let this play, and uh, we'll be right back. All right. I was the man in the grave, now I'm the man on the stage I was the man in the grave, now I'm up getting this cave I was the man in the grave, you gotta get out the way I was the man in the grave, watch how you speak on my name I was the man in the grave, now I'm the man on the stage I was the man in the grave, now I'm up getting this cave I was the man in the grave, you gotta get out the way I was the man in the grave, watch how you speak on my name
All right, that was that. This is this. So, um, yeah. So, what are you excited about with the music you're bringing out, dude? Dude, I have this EP. Oh yeah, what did you just record? Um, I recorded seven songs. No, not seven. I'm wilding. It was five songs, and the EP is like seven and some change long, like seven minutes and some change long. Every song is dumb short, but every song is super meaningful. And, like, it's some of the best work I've ever put out, and it's some of the shortest work I've ever put out, and it's the most honest thing I've ever put out in my life. So it was, like, strategically <laughs> minute by Excuse minute? Me. <clears throat> Excuse me again. I'm sorry. Jeez, that's going to be a good one. That's some ASMR for somebody, <laughs> dude. Someone's going to fucking jerk off to that burp. Yeah, <laughs> that shit was crazy. But, uh, no, I think uh, it, w- it was definitely methodical. <laughs> It was definitely thought of, like, strategic. Like, you planned before you made the seventh song from the... No, no, it was only five songs. It's just seven minutes long. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, every single song that I wrote, I was like, okay, how can I make a catchy song that's also super meaningful and also super deep and something that is me without a second verse? Like how can I give you? How can I give people glimpses glimpses of significant pain? I never in 40 do second seconds? verses. Now that I think about it, huh. I just recorded a song the other day that has a second verse on it. I should start doing that. I'm gonna start doing that. What second verse? Yeah. Now that I think, I don't really have full songs with the second verse. It works. You can though. you can get a whole different fucking vibe there though. It works. I have a hook, a I have verse, songs, and a hook. But not many. I have a verse, a hook, and a. I have a. I have a hook, a verse, and a hook, and then maybe the hook will loop, and Word. then that's it. Mm. But every verse is so meaningful, and it's it it, it, it like every song is different. How's the beat selection? The beat selection is mad diverse. Um, there's one song on there for like the hip hop heads that will really appreciate like multi syllables and really appreciate like that's metaphors. What I, like. I love that shit. And like it's lo fi ish. Every every song is like. Like lo fi ish almost, but also very like in your face. Like I really feel like I found the perfect balance of aggression, truth, and uh calm revealing moments within the balance this album. Of it all, word. You know, even with the most aggressive song on there, which has me screaming on it, there's so many there's moments where like you can feel and hear how vulnerable I am. Rather than, you know, you know how most aggressive songs are like braggadocious. Mm -hmm. Like every song reveals a part of me. Yeah, Even if it's not aggressive in tone, if you're braggadocious, that's aggression. Exactly, exactly. But like the content and just like what I'm speaking about and the the topics that I touch and just how the honesty in it is the is the most amazing thing for me. And it's like every song is different, but it all fits in the same universe. It's like I created my own Gotham. Mm-hmm. With its own different like villains, you know, but I'm not mm-hmm. Batman. <laughs> Word. Facts. I'm not Batman. I'm not trying to save anything. I'm not trying to save anybody. It's just like, here's my pain for a second. See how comfortable you are with it. Mm-hmm. You know, feel what I feel if you can. Mm-hmm. And it's like the most pleasing thing I've ever made in my life. Oh, that's the thing. Nowadays, 100%. everybody got fear porn. Everybody's like so desensitized to it, to the fact that like being scared is like porn to them. Right. So like maybe your like timing is perfect to be completely. Um, you're never been up like you've always been unapologetically honest, but like what you're saying, you found the balance of it. Though. I did. I That's did. awesome. I'm stoked as fuck to hear it. It's so good. Do you have like, <laughs> like a roll? So Are you doing good. a specific rollout? Are you dropping it all at once? Uh, I don't know yet. I think I'm gonna record a little bit more and uh, probably drop some songs that have not shit to do with that. Word. And Might as well. you know, just see how people react to all my other different vibes. Because you know, I'm not just like a mental health artist. I can you know go into any different lane that I want to, honestly. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, I think that's going to be something that people are going to see with like the other singles that I put out and just with like the flows I can use and the metaphors <laughs> that I can use and the catchiness I can get. I feel like personally, and I don't mean to say this on like an egotistical basis, I think I'm the perfect artist. I think I'm the perfect mix between lyrical, catchy, marketable, a real person, mm-hmm. and like 
just like I'm, I think I'm an all around great artist. You are. This this is the thing. Like a lot, every, everyone that I fuck with is that yeah. you know in their own right. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's, you're, it's, you're the it's, same it's, way. It's about capturing and how can you present it because right. it's not about having like a label control. It's not about control. It's just about making sure that what you feel is portrayed the right way. You know what I was listening to so, the other day? What South Street. <laughs> <laughs> that I, portrays that vibe heavy. and i was like yo this nigga's snapping but he's also catching me with the hook that and was a freestyle that For was real? the actual freestyle that I, I have the video of it that i freestyled on south street that's crazy with fitted fitted was playing his beat shout out to dj fitted and fucking i was just singing it on south street and then the next week i recorded it the next day i, me- I just memorized the freestyle and recorded it here at my house and then the next cypher it was playing and fucking groups of people kept coming in asking where what's whose song is this where's this song at because they were on south street and people were trying to sh- shazam the shit before i dropped it bro that's like that's what i mean though that captured the vibe in the moment right. so when you hear that it's like it's not crazy lyrical it's not crazy party it's just a it's a bop that brings you to a spot there's you know? one song on that on the ep that's like we're Tardedly lyrical. There's one song that's like super hype, and they do their they do their job. Yeah, 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 they totally do. There's one song that's there's two songs that's mad aggressive, and then there's one song that's like my favorite song, and <clears throat> it's it's like the best song on there. I'm not gonna give it away. I want to tell you guys, <laughs> dude. I want to tell you so bad. I hear this shit. Yo, I'll, I'll show it to yeah, you. you later. Gotta play me I'll show it to you later. It's on my yeah. phone. But like, and I've given other people that are like my close homies like the actual EP for free. I've just emailed it to them, you mm-hmm. know, because I love them that much. Word. Is it out already? Nah, it's not out whatsoever. Word. I've just emailed it to like my homies and shit, like people who wanted to hear it, and every single person who listened to it was like, "This is like crazy." Good shit. This is this is good. I can't wait to hear it and see the pictures of it and the it's painting. So amazing, how you're gonna paint dude. it. That's the thing, like that's the beauty of music and you see you see the growth of yourself when you listen back and like I record all my own stuff. So my catalog is so fucking stupid. It's it was huge and when I realized that right before COVID, when I told you that year I took mm-hmm. off, I dropped it all. I released everything. So I that's have like crazy. hundreds of songs out now and of quality in all different genres, but I haven't promote any of it because i'm like a rebelling against the fake internet algorithm you know so i have this idea that like it's it's circulating back to talent and if people don't they're not going to want to watch the fake shit or even hear about the fake shit so what are they going to they're going to look for real shit real conversations real thought patterns and then real talent real music so i feel like all the shit that i dropped should play a role in like doing its self promo in the next one. Right. But I'm leading that into saying this, that everything that I've created has kind of just been on the go and whatever lumps together as a vibe, I can throw it, slap it together. Mm-hmm. I've never done the thing that you just did, where it's, like, where it's like a solid project that you're so happy with. And I can't wait to get to the spot where I'm ready to make that album. So like I'm envious as fuck. <laughs> I'm envious as fuck is where you are Bro, right now. This shit is this shit is so damn beautiful. Like yes. to to be able to stand behind I one, can't wait to get there. You I've I really advise you to, bro, because mm-hmm. to stand behind one project of music that you made intentionally for a single like moment in your life mm-hmm. is the most beautiful thing. I explained everything that I was going through in that moment of time. In the best way I possibly could, and it came out exactly the way I wanted it to. There's not one single flaw on this album that I can't. Even the flaws that I do here don't bother me. You know how like how how that's how, the real shit. You know that's like the imperfections that are perfect. Do you know how powerful that is as an artist, mm. as a, someone who's like to not critique it. You and know, know fix like it. I I listen to my album. Punch in, fix it. I li- right, exactly. <laughs> I listen to my shit on the way to work because it's something that I want to hear all the time. Mm-hmm. It's not because I'm full of myself, but it's because mm-hmm. this is the music I want to hear from other artists, but other artists aren't making it, so I'm going to make it. Yeah, When you think of like Kanye sitting back and just listening to his shit, sitting on his couch, like, yeah, that's what That's I not do. crazy. That's, that's what I do. That's, <laughs> I bro, I'll, I'll listen I digest to, my shit. I'll listen to my own, like my old SoundCloud songs, and I'll be like, yo, I really snapped on this. Mm-hmm. I was really this talented. I slept on, you know, yeah, like, like all of it. 
But this, this, bro, this is why like, this is why it makes me sad because the algorithm back then in 2012, 13, 14, when you drop something algorithmically on Facebook or anything, your whole friends list saw it. If you shared a link, it wasn't butted down because you didn't pay for advertisement, and it didn't wasn't only shown to 10. percent So when someone popped or went viral, it was a genuine pop. It was like a a medieval. It was like a new version of a record store. How like people used to walk in record stores to find yeah. random new shit, and they would just be like, "Oh, I want to try jazz today." And this album looks cool. I have no idea who these guys are. Let me take this. Let, and they would pick 10 albums and find new artists that they love. But you know what, That's not that? happening now because everyone's force fed just like the radio was force feeding us as kids mm-hmm. growing up. And all we heard was what they've played over and over on the radio. But you know what ruined that? What, what, Being what, saturated. What, what was weird though is weird though. Any album that you have, you have you ever purchased an album? I've listened to album. The first album I ever bought was Volume 3, The Subliminal And I Versus guarantee your Slipknot. favorite song wasn't the popular one. Nah. My favorite song by Slipknot ever on that album. And it wasn't their single. It wasn't. Why is that? It's definitely not before Why I forget. Is the best <laughs> song, why is the best song on every album not the single? Think the, about it. Think about it. No yo, one likes for the, real. No one likes the single. ASAP Rocky's second album has nothing but slappers and LSD is trash. Mm. Uh, compared to all of them. LSD yeah. is trash. Sorry. But like... Compared to everything every else. Single, every single other song on that is fucking crazy. And but that's LSD is trash. It was the one that could be packaged and shit. Mm-hmm. And see, in, in this industry, what we're getting into, it's, it's a entertainment. And the, not that it's false, but it's like, that's not the best work. It's so like why, like, why are we celebrating the shit that's, that's like celebrating like third place type shit? And we're like, we are the generation of that. Like, we weren't, like, didn't accept the participation trophies. But y'all were you know thusting it say? on them. Back in the 90s, even though as much as I feel like them niggas was lying about a lot of shit, it was one of the eras where, like, if you had bars, that's how you was getting famous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you was not with the bars. It was battle rap and all, like, it was all that. That's why I, I did the ciphers, because I didn't feel like people rapping, battling. That's why I did ciphers instead. I watch battle rap a lot now, and I used to think mm-hmm. the niggas was corny, because I feel, I used to think, like, the niggas not doing but talking shit to Y'all each other. Y'all just yelling at each other. But nah, but, the shit that they say is crazy. But no, crazy. it's, it's wordplay. But, but like, for me, it's like a fight. I can't do that It's shit. like, I wouldn't be able to be a boxer, because I, I need to not like the person that I'm fighting. Right, you know, I need to, I need to want to break the guys. Face. As a battle rapper, like on some battle rap shit, you're not gonna talk crazy to me. That's how I feel about that too. And you're if not I'm gonna talk crazy to me, then I'm gonna face. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, it's like, nah. I respect the niggas who can do that because they catch bags. You feel yeah. me? They get money from that. No, shit. shout out my guy Dre Dennis. He's been fucking shit up. Word. Bro. Yeah, he's been killing it. He just said some crazy shit. I just saw an Instagram thing of it today. He just said some wild shit. What did he say? I should play it for you. I'll play it for you after. Cause like. Dre Dennis is who I recorded um, A Bug's Life with right before I got my DUI. And he was in the Berlin cipher that I did. And um, when we were chilling then, he had just started getting, because I was doing cyphers, and cyphers I kind of slowed down on because I rode the wave of that popularity from when I caught that wave. And which isn't a bad thing. I was 20 years old. I was fucking raging. I don't regret nothing. <laughs> like everything was fucking amazing. But he had just started getting into the battle scene then. And now. Obviously, six years later, I went kind of in the show route, this route where he went to the battle rap route, and he's fucking shitting on everyone, bro. He's he's shitting on everybody. My favorite line back then, I, I freaked out. I, I, I lost my shit when he said this. At a, I screamed at the top of my lungs. Like what did he say? Everybody else did, but he's like... So the guy he was battling had nine in his name or something like something this something nine because he and he's fat he was fat then so he was like a sucking on your bitch titties while she's sucking mine <laughs> and when he said that I lost my <laughs> Yo, that's wild. He said, sucking on the titties while she's sucking mine. I said, Dre, no, you didn't. Yeah, that's crazy. Dude, that's like, that's I am crazy. white. I am a fucking bum. I do I live do in the trailer, trailer. Mama. <laughs> Yeah, that is fire. That was his version of it. That and it was <laughs> so beautiful to watch. My favorite battle rapper right now is battle Chess. rap, you like go at like their looks and shit. And Bro, Chess said, Chess. Unless you know real shit. Do you know who him. Chess is? He's a battle I rapper. I definitely know. Bro. You know how he walks, right? I feel like he battled chess. He probably battled chess. You know how chess walks, right? Like, you know how how funny he walks? He He walks like his body is in front of him and his legs are behind him. Uh. And, like, 
He said some shit about like he was like you won't even know that I got the shotgun in my pants cuz I already walk funny and it <laughs> shook the room cuz he really walks Cause weird. Just, yeah, cuz he just said He walks shit. like a crack baby. <laughs> like he walks like he's disfigured like like he's That's missing great. a molecule in his spine like That's great. But he's so See, battle impressive. rap is funny and I would be a fucking monster. But I like I bro. said, I can't. The I niggas can't, would smoke me. I, I would no. I would fuck everybody up. But I just don't want to do that because battle rap is I would hard. Go, I dude. would go there. Nah, I would. I would fuck shit up. Like, like nah, I'm not talking about niggas like, 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 like you would fuck shit up too if you did it. <laughs> like if you did the, it, the way that they put you're a words, lyricist. but people though, like the way that they put words together. That's just on because a, there's no beat on a constant basis. Though, no, but that's, that's really no, but listen, crazy. That's just because there's no beat. So we're we're songwriters. So we right. write some music all the time. We're limited. No, no, yeah, we're limiting in that capsule of the vibe that yeah. we're deciding to write in. If you're just a battle rapper, you're planning and writing it in the sense of no beat. So like. Sucking on her titties while she's sucking mine. And you know that that's going to be the punchline. And you know that's where you're going to look at the crowd. And everyone's going to freak out. You take a second. Now, like, what am I going to... You know, like, that's... It's very systematic how we do it. So this is why, like I said, I started painting. Because I make every genre. And like I said, I release a lot of music. I don't want to promo it. Because I do feel like not only is the algorithm already fucked. I feel like once you do pay to get that advertisement in the algorithm... They're gonna even shadow ban you more if you don't continue to. So I like there's there's games that they're being that are being played. So I had to really reassess my art and like, do I really want to paint and make music? Yeah, well, I'm actually gonna paint. So I bought canvases and started painting. Bro, nobody. It, no, but listen, it, it took it brought out a complete different other side of me as a musician because now I'm not making music and then thinking of the visuals. That's beautiful. I'm painting and creating the visual first and building the music around what I see. That's what you should. It's do. completely different. Whereas everything. That's else how was, I'm able to rap how, without a beat. But this is th- no. This is why. But this is why you don't write without a beat, though. This yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah, So exactly. if you started writing without beats, I think you would naturally just start coming up with fuck you bars. <laughs> like, I think we would naturally just start turning into battle rappers if we wrote without a beat. I actually said some crazy shit. I wrote like, I wrote like an actual no barred out verse the other day, and I was like, I was so proud of myself because, like, it's been such a long time that I actually put myself in that bag to where I put, like, metaphors back to back to back mm-hmm. in my shit. And I was like, yeah. I do that, like, good. a couple of times. I'm, like, uh, like I don't even try to. It just, I used to be that kind of happens. rapper. It happens. I just do it just to. Because Wayne was out and I it's was It's kind of like working out. It's kind of like going for a jog. Because, I mean, I haven't used it in so long, so I mm-hmm. lost it. Like that's, so why, that's how I treat boom bap and cypher raps. It's like. It's just sharpening your sh- your fucking tool because rapping is at the base. It isn't battle rap, but rapping at its base is just talking your shit. I said some telling shit. your I was story, like, talking your shit. I was like, if I catch my ops, if I catch my ops spying and lurking my old pages, then his story in like researching the old ages. And I was like, whoa, I did that. <laughs> See, so that's what I'm saying. Like, if you did it like this, like, you already have how you would. St- you would rap like this. Yeah. You'd, you'd be showing them like everybody would, has their own little emotions of how they do it. And it, honestly, battle rap has gotten me back to like wanting to like put bars in my shit. Like I'd be such a goof. I would play. be a goofy. Ba- I would play the goofy role. Be like Pat Stay. I'd play the goofy nice guy. Oh, like, like Sharon? I don't know who any of these people are. But, oh, come on. <laughs> but no, I, this is what I'm saying. I don't, I don't even listen to music, let alone like watch. But I only, I I only fuck with Dre. Like, you got to look up Jay. We'll, we'll watch Dre after this because he's, he's going to shit on everybody in there. But um, I don't know. New Jersey twerk is that nigga. I feel like he battled him too, bro. He probably battled all of them. Mm-hmm. He probably battled all of them. But um, but yeah. So so you got your shit coming out. I have a lot of stuff coming out, but I'm not even gonna talk about it because I'm just dropping, man. Like the whole the thing with me is I want people to just know that I'm dropping. You know what? You I'm wanna... dropping every week. As so you should subscribe to my shit and like turn the notice stop playing <laughs> stop playing like you gotta turn, but, but because of the algorithm you can't just subscribe you have to turn the notifications on so that you get an email when i do drop but just know you don't even need that because i'm dropping every fucking week every week every week every week it doesn't matter it doesn't matter but um 
But yeah, we got to do a live take with you. I'm going to get this motherfucker back on, yo. We, we got a lot to talk about, clearly. Yeah, we, we can do. talk. We can talk a part lot more. Part two. But yeah, part two is coming soon. With I just want everybody to know, whoever else been on this podcast, I love y'all, but this was the best one. <laughs> it's been four. <laughs> <laughs> but I, we're going to get some live takes with him. We're going to do a bunch of dope shit. So, um, yeah. yeah, bro. Thank you for sliding through. Appreciate thank it. You, bro. Let's thank go you take a dab. Me. Let's do it. See you guys.